Hello to all my queers and dears who may or may not be here. Welcome back to the stream where we play non-violent games, games that reward the player for intellectual and or emotional engagement rather than for participating in combat or other forms of violent gameplay loops. We're back with Back to the Future the game today. Um, sorry for the delay. Um, like I said, my computer was being very slow today. Um, Thursday, May 15th, 1986. Right, we just got back home. Dad must have used that to haul away all those books from Doc's estate sale. I better use the front door, just in case. Biff finished the wax job on my 4x4. When did we get a bug zapper? Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. Another day? Dad, what are you talking about? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. Well, I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, no. Shoot. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in. This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone. Haven't we suffered enough? Huh? Jennifer on the phone. She'll recognize my voice. Jennifer? Jennifer who? Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend. I don't know who you're talking about. How can I convince you? Tell me something. Only Marty would know. Ah. Uh. The first time he kissed Mom it was at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. That's right. What are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid locks. Marty! Oh my god, Dad! What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff! I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp! Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? Yeah, like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm trying to process here. Where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Bees. Biff! So now the tannins are some kind of minor league mafia? Hey, watch who you're calling minor league. The tannin gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got all over the place. No way. You don't believe me? Biff, no! Bang! <laughs> Check it out. It's your family from mine. In gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. That's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California. <clears throat> Tell me. How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? 
Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. I got a question. <laughs> when did I get run out of town? Two years ago. Don't you remember? We made a deal that we'd go easier on your old man if you left. But now you're back, so the kid gloves can come off. Ooh. Hey! And another thing. Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back! The thing with the manure truck? Which one? <laughs> Okay, but... Biff, what happened to you? When I left here, you were kind of afraid of my dad. Afraid? <laughs> <laughs> no Tannen ain't never been afraid of no McFly. <clears throat> my thought is... Here's what I still don't understand. Why can't you pick on somebody else? We do! We pick on lots of guys! It's kind of our thing. Here's what I still don't understand. What about my mom? I mean, how did she end up with my dad? Beats us! Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. Yes. One more question. Here's my thought. What the hell did you do to my dad? Your dad's been in that wheelchair since before you were born, butthead. And you better hope he has a spare, because you're going to need one in like three seconds. A cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley messes with the Tannen family. Get in! This timeline's been compromised! No! <laughs> Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tannen to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez, they robbed the arcade! We've got to go back to the day Kid Tannen was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannens. Not an option, Doc. Punch him. Okay, Doc, let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, a singer named Trixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker, my girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential. 
You can't let Kid know that you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Huh, looks like Emmett's been busy. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy. Am I right? Uh, no? At least you possess enough shame to lie about it. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. Me, 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 me. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. What in heaven's name? Oh, sorry, Miss Strickland. Just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry. Mr. Brown, why is there a dog in that vehicle? Why? Oh, well, to advance the human condition, of course. Hello, Harry. Harry? Mr. Callahan, what are you doing in that getup? I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Einie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now, where's that speakeasy? Harry, you're just in time. How've you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life... So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been... Uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. It's almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but there'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of there! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. I'll go see if I can find something to help. Or someone. Okay. Mon's house of Ermin. Sleep tight, little Ermins. Don't worry, Emmett. I'm sure you'll get it right someday. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Right now, I'm more concerned with Einstein. Can't you just go into the courthouse to get Einstein? If I still had my job as a clerk, sure, but lately a lot of evidence has gone missing, so they've installed new locks. Now the place is sealed up tighter than my dad's wallet. 
What went wrong with your rocket car? I'm not entirely sure. As soon as we get Einstein down, I'm gonna go look for it. What's up with you and Edna? A couple months ago, I could swear she was making goo-goo eyes at you. That was before my father had her stay sober society meeting thrown out of our house. Now she takes every opportunity she can get to snipe at me and my work. It's very distracting. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? My pop says he's a good cop when he's not drinking. Good. Of course, now I hear he drinks all the time. Oh, that's not good. You know anything about Trixie Trotter? The songbird of the Sierras? The nightingale of the north? The floozy of the foothills? Uh... Never heard of her. And I've definitely never snuck into tan and speakeasy to listen to her. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Aini off that ledge. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never have the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter. Those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around down there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. It doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in a DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered, sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen, when Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. 
<laughs> Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. All right, sounds good. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Hill Valley Expo, October 12th through the 15th. Doc says the expo was the day he officially became a scientist. Seems like he's running a couple months ahead of schedule. Cool. Frankenstein. Any luck with Einstein? I'm still thinking about it. It's a perplexing spatial conundrum, aggravated by Einstein's understandable skittishness. Why don't you go look for your car now? And leave Einstein stuck on a ledge? <laughs> Never! Dogs are much more important than any silly rocket car. Especially one that doesn't work at all. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. And once Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Lathrop? Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Doc's probably gonna like fly the DeLorean up there or something. Maybe if I fiddle Don't with this. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Maybe Edna is a good distraction. Hey, Edna. Mr. Callahan, what can I do for you? What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Saving people from alcohol, vice, and disorder. And also keeping a lookout for hot stories. You'd be surprised how much news breaks on this corner. Broken any stories tonight? Only the usual. Mayor Thomas trying to slink out of the speakeasy. Frankie Needles crashing his car into a fire hydrant. Nothing that'll get me the front page. What's going on with you and Emmett? The last time I saw you, you seemed to be kind of interested in him. That was before I belatedly realized that his agreement to host my Stay Sober Society was a clever ruse to ferry barrels of hooch to his so-called laboratory. Sorry about that. Now his very presence fills me with an irrepressible urge to pick at his philosophical and intellectual foundations with every tool in my vocabulary. So you're not dating? Dating? The mere thought of romantic involvement with that undisciplined techno-anarchist is preposterous. Good. What's Kid Tannen been up to for the last two months? Didn't you hear? It was in all the papers. I've been, uh, traveling. Well, the feds were all set to arrest Tannen on tax evasion charges. Seems they'd gotten Tannen's books from his accountant. I heard something about that, yeah. Well, the accountant disappeared, unsurprisingly. But the feds still thought they had a case. After all, they still had the books, right? Right. Wrong. The day before the trial, the books up and vanished right out of the court's evidence locker. No. Lots of fingers were pointed, but honestly, the whole town's so corrupt that it could have been anyone. Court clerks, cops, janitors. So kids walking around free? Free, clear, and laughing it up in his new speakeasy. The feds want to bring a case up against him, but without those books, they've got nothing. Do you know anything about Officer Danny Parker? Parker? 
just another soul lost to the twin vices of booze and despair. I've asked him to tell me his story for my column. Sort of a cautionary tale, but he's... You wouldn't happen to know anything about Trixie Trotter, would you? Kid Tannen's latest conquest? Well, she claims to be a lounge singer from Seattle, but my sources in Washington have never heard of her. I mean, honestly, Trixie Trotter, what kind of name is that? Whatever happened with that speakeasy arsonist? I was about to ask you the same question. Me? Don't play coy with me. I may not have any journalistically acceptable proof, but I know you had a hand in Carl Sagan's daring escape from the authorities. Didn't you think that Sagan was innocent? I used to, but after he escaped, two more speakeasies were torched in Colfax and Georgetown. That's just a coincidence. Coincidence? Or is our friend Carl a serial arsonist? Couldn't Kid be brought up on other charges like, say, running a speakeasy? In a perfect world, yes. But no one in town seems to care about prohibition anymore. The feds are only interested because of the lost tax revenue. I'm pretty sure that Carl Sagan didn't start those fires. We'll see. One of the reasons I'm camped out so close to Tannen's new speakeasy is it gives me the chance to catch the arsonist in the act. It'd be a great story for my column. What have you got against dogs, anyway? They're smelly, rude, completely unable to take care of themselves, and frankly, they're not very bright. If I had my druthers, dogs would be banned from public places. Harsh. It's a harsh world, Mr. Callahan. I really don't like Edna. She is, you know, really basically just a Puritan, basically. <clears throat> and uh, she wants everyone to conform to that Puritan sense of justice that she has, which is just completely wiping out everything she considers sinful. And that's just not good <laughs> what was that song you were singing earlier do you like it i wrote it myself it really gets the toes tapping at the stay sober society meetings although i suppose that could be the shakes would you like to hear it again uh, maybe later i'll be here all night wasn't very good <laughs> hey i got a hot lead for you Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run... Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine a world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. Well, I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well, fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Well, I guess Edna is somewhat useful in some cases, but she's not a good person. <laughs> What's all this? These are my pamphlets, laying out in scientific detail the horrors visited upon those who succumb to the temptations of alcohol. Lost Fortnite? 
I am particularly fond of that one. It tells the true life tale of Johnny, who woke up in a pile of his own sick, completely unable to remember the previous two weeks of his life. Heavy. Actually, the pamphlets are quite light. See? Donate to the clock tower fund. What's wrong with the clock tower? It's not broken, is it? Not in the slightest. Whew. It's just painfully drab. I'm raising funds to commission a sculptor to place a couple of handsome ornamental statues on either side of the clock face. Something to inspire the citizens to do their civic duty. Something like lions? Or gargoyles. You can't beat a good gargoyle. Lions are, of course, there in the future. Come on, house of Ermin. Sleep tight, little Ermins. Emmett! Not no time for chit-chat. I've got a rocket car to recover. Emmett! You get down from there before you hurt yourself! Hurt myself? <laughs> You're far too cautious, Miss Strickland. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. Hoover 28. A chicken in every pot. How's that working out, Herbie? Who told you to come here? Bruce Springsteen? Take a hike, squirt. Who told you about this place? Place to call to my travel agent. What's the big idea? Uh, stitch in time saves nine. Ah, settle down, mister. Why don't you wait outside and take a nap? Napkin, please. I've made a mess. Oh, I get it. Who died and made you boss? Boss Hog? What will you do if I break your leg? Lego your ego? Where you born? Borneo. Welcome to L Kids, sir. Yes. So what it was was if if you didn't pick it up, was um Ladies the last and gentlemen, word. it's my pleasure to once again uh, present the hottest says. little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter. They say I'm crazy, got no sense, but I don't care. They may or may not mean offense, but I don't care. Out of my way, kid. I got some sorrows to drown. My star is on the ascendant. That's why I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Huh. What that kind of sounds like Edna's song. Me. I'm happy, go lucky, and say I am plucky. So 
jolly and carefree. Louis the Louse, squashed care. in his prime. I don't care if I do get the mean and stony stare. Hey, bartender, if what'll I'm it be? Successful, it won't be distressful, cause I. What are you drawing? Another celebrity caricature. You drew those? Prohibition ain't gonna last forever, Bob. I gotta have a skill I can fall back on when all this goes away. So about this, uh, portrait gallery of yours. What about it? What's it all about? Who are those guys? <clears throat> the caricatures hanging along the Wall of Honor commemorate those who are no longer with us on account of having ticked off one Irving Kid Tannen. They're the guys the kids killed? Well, of course not. They're just a bunch of guys that Kid didn't particularly like and that at a later date turned up dead. It's a, a what do you call it? A, a circumstantial coincidence. Yeah. What can you tell me about Trixie? You trying to put the moves on kids, dame? No way. Good, because if you did, I'd probably be hanging you on the wall of honor. Know what I mean? I'm looking for a cop named Parker. Then this is your lucky night. He's sitting next to you. Oh, him? Yep, quite a sob story, that guy. Sob story? Oh, yeah, job troubles, dame troubles, psychiatric troubles, you name it. You get him in the right frame of mind, he'll talk your ear off about him. So is your cold all better? My cold? Yeah, when I saw you a few hours ago, you were sneezing like crazy. Mister, I ain't had a cold in over two months. Oh, yeah, right, sorry. Wrong guy. Oh, okay. I'll have a drink. What's your poison? Peps, uh, on second thought, forget it. Suit yourself. Think you could do a caricature of me? Sure. Presto! That really doesn't look like me. I didn't have much to work with. Thanks for the talk. Next time, order a drink. This ain't no library, you know. Hey. Take a hike, squirt. Hey. Nice suit. Where'd you get it? Costume shop at the mall. Uh, <laughs> I, I had it custom made. Yeah? Quality material. Who are you? Where you from? Name's, uh, Harry Callahan. Nobody. I mean, you don't know me. I, I come from a, a very different place. Come on. What's the dough? Spill it, or I'll go easy, kid. From the cut of the suit, I'm thinking he might be with the Valenti gang. Is that so? Uh, yes? Prove it. You ain't leaving till you show me some boner fides. In gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. You know, a cigarette lighter shaped like a gun seems like a really bad idea. I've got a little something here that might convince you. No, no, no. Even no, blink. It's not a real gun. It's not a real gun, I swear. It's a gift from Don Valenti. See? To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. Looks like little Harry Callahan here really is with the Sacramento boys. You got stones, Pee-wee. I like that. Have yourself a drink. On the house. Matches, put down your gun. You look like a moron. <sighs> I'm not pulling that thing out in here again unless it's a life or death situation. Oh, no, I didn't mean to. I meant to Excuse just me. talk to her. Are you Trixie Trotter? That's what it says on my dressing room door. At least, it would if I had a dressing room. What's a nice guy like you doing with a guy like Tannen? Oh, uh, kid ain't so bad. He just takes some- Hey, Toots, any chance you could sing that can-can number? The guys really love the way it shows off your, uh, assets. <sighs> Whatever you say, kid. <laughs> and quit lazing around. I ain't paying you to yak with the drunks. You ain't paying me at all, you bum. What were we talking about again? 
You were telling me what a great guy Kid is. Yeah, I guess he is a pretty crummy boyfriend. But until my insurance policy checks out, I guess I'm stuck with him. Insurance? Yeah. Look, I may not be the brightest bulb in the marquee, but even I know. You don't break up with a creep-like kid without something to keep him from going all crazy on you. What's this insurance policy all about? Are you kidding? There's only one person I trust with my secrets. But I ain't seen him in weeks. You don't mean... Artie McFly. Artie McFly. You know him? Not as well as I thought. Before he took a powder, Artie was tutoring me in all sorts of stuff. Etiquette, philosophy, accountant. He's a regular renaissance man. He even had one of those smart guy professor's pipes, see? Can I borrow this? Sure. I've been secretly working on my get-out-of-kid card for weeks now. But Artie's the only one I trust to check my work. You can't be too careful when you're dealing with a maniac like Kid, you know. Hey, you can trust me. Come on, what's the dirt you got on Kid? Nix on that. I ain't spilling nothing till I talk with Arthur Mc... <gasps> F-L-Y. If I arrange a meeting with Artie, could you use that insurance of yours? Use it? Heck, if what I'm sitting on pans out, I could send that bozo all the way to the big house. I'll see what I can do. Alright. That sounds good. Nice caricatures up there, huh? Yeah, Zane's an ace cartoonist. But it's kinda hard for me to look at all those faces knowing the guys they belong to are all six feet under. Yeah, that's, that's not great. I really like your voice. Thanks. You should hear me when I ain't so under the weather. You're sick? Oh yeah, sore throat. That's why I'm giving Cube all so many extended solos tonight. I kind of wondered about that. Do you know Sister Christian? I don't do religious tunes. I don't care. What are those? Are they lyrics for one of your songs? I haven't memorized them yet. Break a leg out there. Thanks. She's supposed to turn on Kid Tana tonight? Okay, Doc, if you say so. Hey, she's pretty much ready for it. Hey, you! Are you talking to me? Yeah, jerk. I saw you making eyes at my Eunice. Oh, lay off, Ernie. He's kind of cute. But, but, you think no, you can wait. just waltz in here and make a play for another fella's girl? I... No. No. Give me a break. She's not my era. Now you are gonna insult her? I ought to paste you one right on the... Let him go, Ernie. Jeez, you're a mean drunk. The hell? I swear we weren't. Jesus. Listen. Drink responsibly, folks. Alright? Hey. Back off, kid. I'm trying to entertain some people here. I like cue ball. Hey, kid. What is it, squirt? It's a nice place you got here, ain't it? I picked out all the statuary myself when I was traveling through Greece. I can tell. It's got that tan and touch. Thanks. How long have you and Trixie been going out? You mean knocking boots? Oh, about a year now. That's a long time. Tell me about it. I keep meaning to dump her for a newer model, but then she starts singing at me, and I remember why we got together in the first place. Love? Free nightclub entertainment. <laughs> It's good to see you doing so well. The boys down in Sacramento were starting to get worried. With all due respect, the boys down in Sacramento can bite me. When that creepy Sagan guy burned down my speakeasy, did the Sacramento boys lift a finger to help me back on my feet? No. Well, and when that weasel accountant McFly went and blabbed to the feds, did the Sacramento boys help me get rid of the evidence? No. But 
I had to put three more cops on my payroll to pull that one off. Okay, but... But nothing. When you get back to Sacramento, you let J.J. Valenti know that Kid Tannen expects a little more respect for his efforts in the future. Understand? No problem, kid. What's that Wall of Fame all about? That, my tiny friend, is where I pay tribute to fallen foes. Cut short in the prime of life before I had a chance to cut it short myself. They're the guys you've whacked. Whacked? Uh, rubbed out. Not in any legally actionable sense, no. Whacked. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, whatever. Hey, I know you. You're... Parker. Ask for Danny, Danny Parker. Hill Valley PD. Uh, have we met? Y you look familiar. Nah. Well, stranger, sit down and have a drink on me. I hear you've been having troubles. Troubles? Buddy, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Want to talk about them? Do, do I? Do I? Yeah, I do. Listen, it all started when this car... Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? Yeah, now about those troubles. Oh, I don't want to wallow in misery. I came here to get happy. Hallelujah! In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? Did you be drinking so much on duty? Probably not, but this joint ain't open when I'm off duty. There's nothing surer. The rich get rich and the poor get children. In the meantime, in between time, Shouldn't you be arresting Tannen? For what? Well, for running a speakeasy, for one thing. Well, I like this speakeasy. So there. Besides, if I arrested him, I'd have to arrest you and me and everyone else in here. And that's just way too much work for one little cop like me. See you later, Danny. I'll be here. I'm supposed to get this guy to arrest Kid Tannen tonight? Trixie may be ready. He ain't. Way down in Louisiana, down in New Orleans. Eh, man, maybe not. <laughs> hey, I do the singing round here. Okay, okay. I just realized, like, because I was thinking he seems to respond really well to the music, right? Like, he was going to tell us our, his troubles, and then she started singing, and we got fun, and he got very happy. So, maybe... Come to me, my melancholy bed. You know, dear, that I'm in love with you. Danny, you. So about those troubles. It all started on uh, June 14th. I was chasing down one of Tannen's boys. When this, uh, this car, straight out of Buck Rogers, popped up out of nowhere and ran my car off the road. No. Then later, I, I lost track of a witness. The poor schlub hasn't been heard from since. That wasn't your fault. And then, to top it off, I somehow managed to lose custody of an 80-year-old arsonist. When not one, but two of those godforsaken space cars showed up and whisked him away. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's what the chief said. Demoted me on the spot. My family sent me to a psych psychiatrist because they thought I was seeing things. And worst of all, my gal Betty left me because she thinks I'm a bad provider and a head case. <laughs> Betty, as in Jennifer's grandma Betty? 
<laughs> what? Listen, Danny, it's really important that you get back together with Betty. Ah, oh, that ship sailed. What the heck with her? I got a little secret that'll set me up with women twice as classy as Betty will ever be. I'll be here. There's a secret song, so let's switch to that. secret what is it oh yeah my secret well you're my pal so i can tell you but don't let it get out i've been working for tannin for over a month now what it's true all i gotta do is look the other way while evidence is getting destroyed or a truck full of gin is coming across the county line and tannin makes sure an extra bunch of bills makes their way into my pay envelope Great deal, huh? No, not a great deal. What's the problem? People need to drink, right? As long as no one's getting hurt, why shouldn't Daniel J. Parker make a few bucks on the action? But people are getting hurt. Kid's a killer. Ah, that's just rumors and circumnavigational evidence. Although, that wall of fame is pretty spooky. Oh God, I've made a horrible mistake. I thought if I could get my hands on some money, that Betty'd take me back. But when she finds out what I'd done, she'll never even talk to me again. What have I done? <laughs> Come on, Danny, pull yourself together. It's not so bad. Not so bad? I'm a corrupt cop who's lost his only chance at true love. How's that not so bad? <laughs> Thank oh, God. Maybe the angry song can help? news it's rage i'm overflowing i've asked my doctor and psychiatrist too they tell me that there's not a thing i can do there's no consoling Danny. and there's no. no controlling this rage trust me things will get why none rage. of the words i don't think there's it i guess now i know why you won't arrest tannin you're working for him there you go Summertime, you know drinking that much is really bad for your health are you, my mother? More like future grandson-in-law. What? Never mind. Trust me, things will get better. Just keep listening to the music. Why? None of the words help anymore. <laughs> I don't think there's anything in the speakeasy that can turn this guy around right now. Anything in the Oh, God. You in? Why not? Double zero.
two. <sighs> He's back. Edna. How's that song going over? Oh, if only I could convince a few of these night owls to stop and listen. Would you like to hear it? Uh, sure. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would request it. You say you've lost your self-respect, but you should care. It's not too late to redirect and start to care. Don't despise the good and pure. Time to rise up from the sewer. Wash off all that foul manure. Show the world you care. You should care. You should care. What people think of you. A ghost that you could name. Reclaiming your good name is what you ought to do. You should care. You should care. If your reputation is in disrepair, it's not going to hurt you to reclaim your virtue, for you should care. Catchy. You really think so? Yeah, it's uh, got a good hook to it. One needs a good hook if one is fishing for souls. You think I could have a copy of your You Should Care lyrics? I've, uh, got a club of my own that could really use some inspiring. Sure. Let me just get a page out of the hymnal. There you are. Hey, Sorry, thanks. that was very loud. You know, Trixie Trotter sings a song that sounds a lot like your You Should Care. She does? Yeah, but hers is a little more carefree. That's what you get when you sing for booze hounds and gangsters. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. So, sorry about that. I don't know why that got so loud. <clears throat> anyway, um, since the songs affect him so much, and Marty said nothing outside, uh, so, n nothing inside the speakeasy Welcome can help. Welcome back, sir. Perhaps. Looks like Parker's still parked. Hey, Trixie, look over there! Why? Didn't you see it? No. Ah, uh, never mind. She didn't have them memorized, so... right. I can turn my life around. Sure you can. You know what? I used to be a good cop. And yeah, I've had a few bad breaks. Possibly even a psychotic one that caused me to imagine a disappearing space car. But I'm a good man. Yeah. And all I need to do to win Betty back is be the same good man I always was. And let the chips fall where they may. All right. So now what? Now I wait. Wait for the moment to take down Kid Tannen, restore my good name, and win back the heart of Betty Lipinski. Hold that thought. I bet that moment is just around the corner. Okay, so... I think that that is about where I'll stop for today. 
I want to get some work done. Um, I, I need to sort of uh, deal with some things. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that's where I'll stop for today, rather than the usual two hours. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, what we're gonna do on Tuesday, I don't know yet. I haven't been able to fix the ghost trick glitch. I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Um, but I'll try and figure that out. Anyway, thank you so much to all my queers and dears who were and weren't here. Uh, <clears throat> thank you all to my queers and dears. Thank you to all my queers and dears who were and weren't here today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll raid someone. Uh, so just hang around for a little bit. Uh, just a few minutes. And uh, let's raid.